good morning students so good that most of you have joined by time so it really helps i appreciate uh, what we are going to see now today first is a very small example of uh, the same routh hurwitz criterion i'm not going to tell you exactly how it is helping the root locus but just see this numerical and uh, let us understand uh, exactly if the characteristic equation is given like this that is uh, first line okay so eventually we will come to this page again so i'm having some 15 to 16 pdfs prepared already for root locus uh, because we find it very difficult to teach root locus and bode plot to students and that too in this pandemic situation when it is uh, you are not near at hand because uh, direct interaction would have solved uh, things a lot better but anyways uh, the material is perfectly prepared it is taken from some book and uh, very properly selected uh, numericals are there and we will understand all the fundamentals of root locus it's a very uh, interesting uh, topic root locus plot that is we have seen that if the gain increases so first lecture i told you that the maha mantra of uh, control system is if the gain increases at the time system becomes uh, unstable so that proof we are going to prove through root locus here you are finding uh, at the top the top of the page it is given sq plus 8a square plus 15a plus k so this is a characteristic equation this characteristic equation gain is not mentioned that means what is the system gain so that generally comes in the numerator uh, don't see the steps whatever is given just see that equation sq plus 8a square plus 15a plus k so that is a characteristic equation that is a denominator of uh, y s by x s and what we are supposed to do is we have seen that if a gain is very low at that time poles are in the left hand side of s prime you have not seen but uh, you have taken my words uh, we will see that in root locus so when k is equal to 0 whatever uh, roots you find so when k is equal to so k is in our hand k is the gain of the system we can increase it we can decrease it so what is the lowest value of k so k cannot be negative gain cannot be negative Lowest value of k is zero, highest value of k is infinity. So this is the first thing you have to understand. And root locus pura ye k ka khel hai. So now if you are keeping k is equal to zero, then you are finding that uh, there are three roots. So you can find all those roots, and you will be finding that all roots are lying in the left hand side of S plane. Then you are increasing the value of k, increasing the value of k. You will be finding that the roots are slowly shifting. Not all the roots. So out of three, one root will keep on going to the negative side of S plane only. another two roots you will be finding as uh, they are going towards the j omega axis and for a certain value of k which is called as a marginal condition you will find that the k value uh, will be uh, in such a way that the roots are two roots are lying exactly on the j omega axis so that is a criticality condition and if you increase k further then you will be finding that roots will go into the uh, right hand side of j omega axis So I will sum up whatever I have said. So for k value zero, we will find there are three roots because s q plus eight s square plus fifteen s plus k. This is a characteristic equation of a system. K value is the system gain. It can vary from zero to infinity. So root locus actually is telling you how the position of the so roots of the characteristic equation is nothing but the poles. How the uh, position of the poles they are changing with respect to gain k. Initially, the value of gain k is equal to zero. All the roots are in the left hand side. We are increasing the value of k. So initially, we will be finding that all all the roots are on the uh, real axis, that is, on the sigma axis. Now, in increasing the value of k, you will find that uh, one root is going deep into the j omega axis. It is becoming more and more stable as k increases. But two roots they will come together, and for a certain value of a, two more roots will be on the same point. If you increase further, you will find that uh the roots will leave the real axis real axis and they will jump on the imaginary axis and they will start going to the j omega axis and for a certain k we will find that roots are on j omega axis that value of gain or k is called as critical gain or marginal gain so we can find what is the frequency for which 
uh, the gain is critical or marginal. Further, you increase the value of k, you will find that roots are entering in the right hand side of geomic axis. So, this is the whole story of root locus. That is, depending on the value of k, we will find that the relative stability of the system is decreasing. Initially, when the value of k is equal to 0, all the three roots are on the real axis. Real axis roots are more stable because there is no oscillation in that case uh, in the output step response. And if you are increasing the gain k, we will be finding that roots are slowly going to the right side. And for a higher value of k, we will find roots are shifting to the real part of geomic axis. So this is actually root locus. You have to find the stability condition. And the top equation is given. Now I'm going to find out by using Routh Hurwitz criteria exactly what is the value of uh, the marginal uh, gain. So I think this thing is given to you already SQ plus 8S square uh, plus 15S plus K. This is given is equal to zero. This is the characteristic equation of the system. So yesterday I told you there are mainly three types of numerical uh, in Routh Hurwitz criteria. And one is the normal, very simple normal uh, characteristic equation is given k is not there so in this case in this equation you find that k is there in uh, routh harvard's characteristic equation so in the normal numerical there will not be any k no it will be some polynomial given in s we have to write down uh, the routh array and we have to solve and we have to check what is the first column if there is no sign change in the first column we will say that uh, there is no sign change in the first column all the elements are positive or all the elements are negative whatever but no sign change that means all the roots of the system uh, are lying in the left hand side of the S plane, all the poles are lying in the left hand side of S plane. System is stable. That is the first case. What is the uh, different uh, exceptional case in case of RH criteria? One case is one row, whole row become equal to zero. Suppose in this case, S is to one. So this whole row become equal to zero, zero, zero. So what we do in that case, we go to the previous row. We find 8S square plus K is equal to zero. We differentiate it with respect to S. So if you different, if you just write 8s square plus k is equal to 0, if you differentiate that, you will be finding that 16s. In that case, s raised to 1, here you will write 16. And you will continue with this table. So that is the second case. Uh, one another type is there that first element becomes uh, 0. First element of a row becomes equal to 0. What do you do in that case? We, in that case, uh, substitute that 0 with a very low positive value. And uh, we continue the Routh Hurwitz array. And finally, whatever element we get in the first uh, column with all epsilon. So every element we do epsilon tends to zero. And we should find that there is no sign change in the first column. And uh, we conclude from there whether the system is stable or not. In case, uh, this is the another type of numerical which I did not do yesterday. But this kind of numerical also is asked in the exam that finding the boundary condition of uh, k or finding the boundary condition of gain for which the system will be stable and if the k value is greater than that system will be unstable okay. so this numerical is the best numerical to understand that and this is actually a part of a root locus so this is the last step second last step i guess so mm -hmm. i have taken this numerical from a root locus only uh, so i'm showing you so what is the uh, equation here what is the condition so one a characteristic polynomial is given to you, but everything we don't know about this polynomial. So it is given as SQ plus 8S square plus 15S plus K. Question is, find that value of K till which the system will be stable. That means the first column of the Routh Hurwitz criteria will be uh, positive in this case. So very easily you can find out that if the uh, if this, this is the third, that is uh, the coefficient of SS to 1, here you are finding this is 120 minus k by 8. So for which value of k, this element will remain positive. Very easily you can find out that if k is 120, uh, then also this element will become positive or 0. So from this equation, very easily we are finding that to this, uh, for this RH criteria or for this RH criteria to be stable, uh, what is the value of k? Maximum value of the k should be uh, 120. That means if uh, the k value is 0 to 120, the first column will be positive. k is greater than 120, that means the s raised to 1 coefficient in the first column will become negative. In that case, from 8 to that negative and from that negative to below, so there will be sign changes and the uh, Routh Hurwitz criterion will become uh, unstable. 
okay so from this rh criteria from this example so this kind of example also will be asked in routh herbert's criterion that is find uh, what is the range of k for which the system is going to step so from this numerical very easily we can find out that k value can be maximum 120 so till k is equal to 120 the system is stable because the first column will be all positives if the first column is all positive that means uh, there is no sign change in the first column that means rh criterion is stable that means all the roots of the given equation that is s cube plus 8s square plus 15s plus k so if i choose any value of k in between 0 to 120 so if i choose uh, k is equal to suppose 110 k is equal to 10 k is equal to 50 k is equal to 70 k value cannot be negative that is the first thing you have to understand so lowest value of k is 0 highest value of k is infinite so any value in between uh, 0 to 120 uh, this above equation s cube plus 8 square plus 15 s plus k uh, will give me all the roots which are negative so you can solve this numerical you are having calculator uh, those who are having calculator they can test just take k is equal to 124 and you can find out uh, what are the roots you will find definitely one root will be positive whenever we are finding one root of the s cube plus 8 s square plus 15 s plus 124 so k i am taking as 124 so as soon as you are taking k value greater than 120 so whenever you are finding root is positive that means system is unstable but till the value of k is equal to 119 or less than 120 you will be finding that all roots of s cube plus 8 s square plus 15 s plus k that is 15 s plus 119 they will be negative so this is the fun of uh, mathematics it never fails so k value from 0 to 120 you will be finding all the value of s will be negative they may be imaginary okay they may be a complex conjugate but the real part will always be negative till the value of k is 120 greater than value of 120 you will be finding the real part of the sum of the root at least one root will become positive so how to find the uh, marginal condition so here it is given that if we want the first column to be all same sign in that case 120 k minus 8 uh, this should be 0 that means k should be equal to 120 or k should be less than 120 to be very precise this is called as k marginal okay so this is called as k marginal means till the gain of 120 the system will be stable so this will be the second last step of Routh Harvard's criterion and up to which frequency that is another question up to which frequency uh, you will find that uh, that gain will remain at 120 so that is shown in the next uh, uh, line actually so i will just scroll down so once you have got it that is k is equal to 120 then you have to substitute it so i have scrolled down so you are finding actually how to find the omega marginal that is how to find that value of s that is how much is the frequency at which the gain will be marginal gain so how much is the marginal gain here marginal gain is 120 why is it called marginal gain because less than that 120 gain system is stable greater than 120 gain system is unstable that's why uh, that 120 gain is called as k or k marginal okay like this and how to find the frequency s at which you are going to get this k marginal so once you have found out from this s raised to one equation that is k should be 120 maximum value go to the previous line okay so this is previous line is 8 you can say this is s square it is not clearly visible but you can understand it is s square this is 8 and k so what is this equation so from the s raised to one equation you are uh, finding that k is 120 go to the previous step it is 8 s square plus k that means 8 s square plus 120 is equal to 0 so this is what is written here so as soon as you are finding k marginal is equal to 120 go to the previous line of s square and write this equation 8 s square plus k marginal is equal to 0 from there you are finding s is equal to plus minus j 3.87 what is the meaning of that so s square is equal to minus 120 by 8 that is minus 15 minus 15 means 15 j square 15 j square if you are finding the root so root of j square is j and root of 15 is 3.87 a very important step you can check from here that is from 120 minus k divided by uh, 8 from the first column of Routh Herbert's we are finding that maximum value of k can be 120 that is called as k marginal boundary conditions more than that value of k system will become unstable so we have to 
increase the gain of k maximum up to 120 okay so the system will be stable so Rauth Horowitz criterion root locus is all about stability so till k is equal to 120 system will be stable so from there we have to find out k marginal k marginal is 120 at which frequency frequency means input frequency to the system or exactly at which frequency if input to the system system will be k marginal uh, more than that frequency and system will be unstable so how to find it so from this ss to one coefficient you have found k is 120 go to the previous line it is 8 s square plus k that is 8 s square plus 120 is equal to 0 from there you are finding s square is minus 15 minus 15 means 15 j square so s is equal to plus minus so from j square we are getting j so this minus means j square okay so j square the root is j and root under of 15 is 3.87 so conclusion we have to write in case of root locus is if we are inputting various frequency to the system which system whose transfer function is given that is 8 sq sorry sq plus something 8 square sub plus 15 is something plus k is equal to 0 if we are inputting frequency maximum up to 3.87 radian per second so this you have to understand very importantly people do root locus blindly they get the answer they draw the plot done exam ho gaya, bhul gaya. we should it should not happen like that okay so it should go into our blood we should understand it thoroughly so what is meant by uh, s is equal to plus minus j 3.87 this is called as omega marginal so k marginal and omega marginal these two things we have to find finally in case of root locus significance what we say is if uh, s is equal to 3.87 uh, radian per second in that case we are going to get the system gain uh, as 120 or on the other hand you can say if we are inputting the gain as 120 uh, system gain k value that will generate a frequency of 3.87 uh, radian per second in the system. So that frequency is called as marginal frequency, omega mark, and that gain k is called as k mark or k marginal. So these two things, every time we have to find out. So we have to say that up to k is equal to 120, system will be a stable. Greater than 120, system will become unstable. And at uh, marginal stability, that is k is equal to 120, we are finding marginal frequency of oscillation of the system will be 3.87 radian per second so write that unit properly so this was the last part which was remaining in case of uh, root locus so i have told it, it to you with the help of a uh, numerical that we have found in case of root locus now how to find uh, how to find damping ratio at uh, k marginal okay so here it is written that here the root locus intersects the imaginary axis at plus minus j 3.17 so i told you whenever the system is oscillating unconditionally that is natural oscillation at that time roots are on j omega axis so where are the roots now at k is equal to 120 two roots will be there they will be at plus minus j 3.87 radian per second uh, we need to find out k for the damping ratio so this is another thing you please keep on writing this thing down uh, how to find the k uh, for the damping ratio so now the uh, k is given actually now this formula only up to this much i will tell you uh, how to find this theta uh, we will see later on so we need to find out k for this damping ratio of 0.5 so if damping ratio is given 0 0.5 0 0.7 0 0.9 we can find out uh, at how much of gain that damping ratio will be achieved okay so the k gain changes damping ratio also changes we have found that whenever the k value is zero so undamped undamped means uh, sorry zeta value is zero i'm sorry not k value the zeta value is zero uh, that means system is undamped gain of the system is very high okay in that case uh, we are reducing the gain as soon as we are reducing the gain we will be finding that zeta value is increasing so you can see it's a cost factor so theta is equal to cos inverse of zeta okay so i am saying that zeta is equal to 0.5 that means in a cos inverse of 0.5 you will be finding that theta is equal to 60 degree that means if we are keeping uh, the phase angle of the system as 60 degree we will find the damping ratio will be 0.5 so you are reducing the value of angle so which angle how to draw it this angle also i will show you in root locus how to draw this angle so we have to draw angle of 60 degree starting from origin and that will intersect uh, the root locus at certain point and at that frequency we will say that zeta is equal to uh, 0.5 uh, 
ओके सो जस्ट नो दिस मच दैट थीटा इज इक्वल टू कॉज इन वर्स जीटा इतना ही जानो अभी ओके व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस हाउ टू शो हाउ टू शो इट व्हाई टू सी इट आई विल टेल यू ड्यूरिंग रूट लोकस सो ओनली राइट डाउन दिस फॉर्मूला इन योर नोटबुक दैट इफ डैम्पिंग रेशियो इज गिवन डैम्पिंग रेशियो इज 0.5 डैम्पिंग रेशियो कैन बी 2 Uh, but two you cannot represent in cos theta because cos theta maximum value can be uh, one plus minus one. So uh, in that case, theta is equal to cos inverse zeta. So this one formula you remember. Okay. So uh, the cos theta damping ratio is not very important. Now I will start with uh, what is called as root locus. Okay. So I will tell you exactly what is root locus, and uh, this is actually taken from a book. I think my Uh, book is visible so what exactly root locus is doing it says that in the chapter of stability so we'll just go through this in the chapter of stability uh, we discuss the raut criterion in detail it was seen how the raut criterion helps in determining whether the system is stable or unstable because we were checking first we are preparing the raut table we are checking the first column if all the elements are of same sign then we are saying system is stable if there are two sign changes then we say that two poles are there in the right hand side of s plane two closed loop pole Okay, and if two poles are in the right hand side of S plane, that means system is unstable. So apart from this, the Routh criterion also gives us information about the number of poles that are there in the right hand side of S plane for an unstable system, and the position of the poles on the imaginary axis increase of marginally stable system. So that also we can find out. It was noted that the stability of a closed loop system depends on the location of the closed loop poles of the system. Uh, the major shortcoming of rh criteria that is rout hurwitz criteria it is called as rh criteria is that it does not give us the remaining pole location so if i say there are s to 5 s to 5 the characteristic equation is having highest order of 5 so it by rout hurwitz criterion we can find okay two poles are in the right side of s plane fine so where are the other three poles they are stable poles fine but where are the other three poles whether they are on real axis in the left hand side or one pole on the real axis and two pole are imaginary so we don't know anything about the position of pole we only know from our rh criteria whether they are in the left hand side or right hand side but only knowing left hand side or right hand side does not do our job we should know exactly where the poles are lying that information we cannot get from our rh criteria so what is the major shortcoming of our rh criteria for which we should go for root locus is explained here so main uh, drawback of rh criteria is it only tells us that two poles are in the right hand side of s plane three poles are in the left hand side of s plane but where are the poles situated we don't know we cannot find out it from routh hurwitz criteria so consider a design problem in which the designer requires to achieve the desired performance of a system by adjusting the location of its closed loop poles in s plane we are only talking about closed loop poles only that we find out from cs by rs denominator equation but we need to know where, what are the locations of poles that we don't get from rh criteria so the routh criterion will not be able to help him in this regard in such case it is advantageous to know how the closed loop poles of a system move on the s plane move with respect to what so this is the biggest gain in root locus that if we change the gain so just now we have seen a characteristic equation s cube plus 8 s square plus 15 s plus k or something if we keep on changing the value of k we will find that the roots of the uh, polynomial are changing or the position of the poles are actually changing so uh, those who have even scored 80 marks in control system and done very good in control system you just ask by what is the uh, root locus plot it is a plot between what root locus plot actually is uh, everybody can solve it 10 steps uh, they can do they can draw the root locus correctly break away point centroid and all this thing everybody can find they know how to do it but exactly what is the significance of root locus that you have to understand first it is not the process it is what actually it is it is actually a plot between so root locus is a plot between the gain which is varying from 0 to infinity and the location of pole as simple as that so gain k system gain k uh, with the location of pole so as we are increasing the value of k from 0 to infinity we will find that the pole position also changing initially all poles are on uh, maybe real axis or there may be some imaginary pole there are some zeros also that is there so we have we will see what is the effect of adding zero to the system we will see what is the effect of adding another pole to the system so this you have to remember if we insert as zero to the system system becomes more stable 
तो ये लिख के रखो बिकॉज आई ए में ये क्वेश्चन पूछा जाता है वट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ एडिंग पोल एंड एडिंग जीरो सो एडिंग एक्स्ट्रा जीरो इन जी एस एच एस इक्वेशन सो अब फिर से वो जी एस एच एस आ गया ओपन लुक ट्रांसफर फंक्शन इन जी एस एच एस इफ वी आर एडिंग अ पोल सो ऑलरेडी वन जीरो इज देयर अनदर जीरो वी आर एडिंग सपोज न्यूमरेटर देर इज एस प्लस थ्री अनदर जीरो वी एड सो एस प्लस फाइव वी डू सो इफ वी आर एडिंग जीरो टू द सिस्टम एडिंग मीन्स इंसर्टिंग अ जीरो इन द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन सिस्टम बिकम्स मोर स्टेबल and if you are inserting a pole in the system system becomes more unstable okay so we will see exactly how it is happening by using root locus so root locus is a plot between gain and uh, position of roots we will see that initially k is equal to 0 roots are all stable left hand side of s pen as you are increasing the value of k roots are changing position for a certain value of k roots are on j omega axis at that time we find frequency that is the gain is called as marginal gain that frequency is called as marginal frequency more than that gain k roots enter in the right hand side of s plane and k is increased to infinity roots also will go to the infinity in the right hand side that means they will become extremely unstable so this whole locus or loci loci means the path okay the whole path of when k changes k increased how the poles are uh, propagating okay so the whole path of k we draw it Uh, by uh, root locus technique. So initially it was stable, left hand side real axis. Then फिर से वो थोड़ा बड़ा. It comes on zero mega axis. Again increase in the k and it go to the right hand side and it go to the infinity asymptotic. Okay. Sometimes it might not happen. Sometimes it will stay on the uh, uh, left hand side only and it will go straight to the uh, positive infinity. But it stays in the left hand side only. Okay. So all those things we will see. So root locus is actually how the closed loop poles of a system move in the S plane. Move in the S plane means S plane is divided into two parts. J omega axis is marginally stable, left side is perfectly stable, right side is unstable. So how it moves uh, from stable to unstable, or maybe from unstable to stable, if it happens, we will see how it happens in case of root locus. So last line, it is given as root locus introduced by W or Evans is a pictorial representation of how the closed loop poles move when the gain of the system is varied. Varied means increased from k is equal to zero up to k is equal to infinity. the root locus uh, is a powerful technique uh, as it displays the entire dynamic response of the system and hence is extensively used in control engineering so now what we will see is so this is the first page of the document the other pages if we see we will see exactly uh, how the root locus is plotted so that example we will not see today because uh, what we will see is what is the traditional method of Uh, root locus so this is not the root locus method but this is the traditional method what is given what will be given is gs i think this document is visible to you yes the document is visible to you so what i'll do is i will tell you exactly what is the effect so this is a system you are finding that is a closed loop system with h is equal to 1 so always try to keep h is equal to 1 that is a 100% feedback input and output k by s into s plus 4 this is called as forward path gain What is GS K by S into S plus four? K is not given because K we are going to vary from zero to infinity. So every numerical in root locus. <coughs> Again, we have to uh, get GS H S mostly G S because H S is kept as one. And root locus numerical, you will understand that K value is not given. So there will be a K in G S. Okay. And uh, previous numerical in uh, in uh, second chapter, third chapter, K was not given. Some value was given in case. root locus numerical <coughs> always the k value will be given because k value we have to vary to get the pole position so gshs you are getting as k by s plus uh, s k divided by s into s plus 4 now find gs divided by 1 plus gshs you are doing that so 1 plus so denominator equation what is denominator equation i told you that 1 plus gsh so gshs is called as open loop transfer function and 1 plus gshs is called as closed loop transfer function rather numerator of 1 plus gshs that is actually the closed loop characteristic equation remember this because you are finding this is 1 plus gshs is coming to the denominator of cs by rs this is called cltf closed loop transfer function so this 1 plus gshs that means 1 plus k divided by s into s plus 4 if you are doing that you are getting s into s plus 4 plus k so that is s square plus 4s plus k now this becomes our characteristic equation now we are supposed to plot if we are changing the value of k from 0 to infinity so this is a very important numerical do this is very easy but this will give you the real feel of root locus so now k value we have to change so how to find the roots of this 
quadratic equation. So I will repeat again. So k by s into s plus 4 is given. That is a gshs equal to 1. 1 plus gshs. 1 plus gshs means 1 plus uh, k divided by s into s plus 4. Uh, if you do that, so you are getting that uh, numerator. Don't, not the denominator. Okay, Numerator of the denominator polynomial of cs by rs. That is 1 plus gshs. It's because numerator s into s plus 4 plus k. Uh, that will be actually the characteristic equation. So, s square plus 4s plus k. Now, we have to change the value of k from different values. So, s1 and s2, two poles you are finding. And if you do this, you will be finding that s1 and s2, they are minus 2 plus minus 4 minus k. Okay. So, very simple numerical. It will be uploaded. And you will be finding that in this case, uh, k value is 0. Initially, you keep k is equal to 0. So, you can see here this table. Uh, this is a traditional method. This may root locus because this is a second order system so we are able to do traditional method if i give you a system with four or five poles in that case you cannot do this okay in that case you have to take the help of root locus but this is also a root locus but by traditional method so if you put k is equal to zero you will be finding that uh, this k is equal to zero so this root under of four is two so two poles will be getting this is minus four and zero very easily understandable if uh, k is 0, in that case, root under of 4, root under of 4 means 2. So, minus 2 plus minus 2. So, what is S1? S1 is 0 and S2 is equal to minus 4. So, initially, you are finding for k is equal to 0, one pole is at origin, another pole is there at minus 4. Now, you are changing the value of k. Now, just put k is equal to 1. So, this equation is Previous page. Previous page, what is given? k by s into s plus 4. From there, you do multiply this by hs1. 1 plus GSHS is a numerator. Is a numerator lelo to s square plus 4s plus k is equal to 0 is the characteristic equation. And up to characteristic equation is s cube. You can solve by your calculator. You won't have to go by root locus. You can solve by calculator. Just keep on putting different values of k until s cube you can solve by your calculator. So k is equal to 0. We are finding two roots 0 and minus 4. So both are on real root. Uh, that is 0 is origin and minus 4 is on uh, minus sigma. Then substitute k is equal to 1. You are finding these are two uh, roots which are negative. So 0 has shifted to minus, two point, uh, minus 0.267. So there are two roots initially. One is 0, another is minus 4. If you are increasing the value of k, ye thoda nazdi kaya, ye bhi thoda nazdi kaya. Likewise, these two roots will keep on coming closer to each other. You are finding that. Very interesting thing. Because everything is very important. This k is equal to 4 is a very important point. Okay, here you are finding that both the roots. So, 0 wala jo hai minus 2 mein aaya, minus 4 wala jo hai, obi minus 2 mein aaya. So, they are meeting at one point. Okay, that means for k is equal to 4, this 0 root which was there on origin, it will be shifted leftward and it will come to minus 2. So, slowly you are finding k is equal to 0, first root is 0. k is equal to 1, first root is minus 0.276. k is equal to 1.5, first root is minus 0.41 k is equal to 2 uh, first root is minus 0.58 so all are negative that means from 0 it is going to a locus of minus 2 if the k value is increased from 0 to 4 same thing is happening for the second root but second root is shifting rightward so second root is becoming a little bit more unstable and first root is becoming more stable because more you are deeper you are going into the geomega axis you are becoming more stable and from the negative left hand side if you are coming to the right you are coming towards more instability so the first root is becoming more stable if gain is increased from 0 to 4 <coughs> and the second root is becoming little unstable uh, if you are increasing the gain from 0 to 4 and at k is equal to 4 uh, both the roots meet on minus 2 what is this point called this point is called as breakaway point because little bit more gain than uh, 4 that means k becomes suppose 4.1 we will find that the roots will jump into the imaginary axis. So, what is the highest uh, gain for which roots are real? Highest gain when roots are real, the gain should be equal to 4. You can find it from this above equation. So, k is equal to 4 means this uh, root under a part, it goes vanishes. So, what are the roots? S1 and S2 both are minus 2 minus 2. If you calculate here for gain is k is equal to 4, you will find that uh, this is a critically damped condition. Now you have to correlate everything what we have done previously. We have finding that from k is equal to 0 to 4, that means k is equal to 3.9999. Uh, both roots are on uh, real axis and both the position of the roots are different. That means the uh, damping will be uh, greater than 1. 
okay because we have seen if the damping is greater than 1 for a second order system uh, the both roots are on real axis and different position then at uh, critical uh, damped case that is when zeta is equal to 1 in that case we will find that both the roots are on real axis in the left hand side and at the same position so from k is equal to 0 up to k is equal to 3.9999 you will be finding that it's a over damped system over damped system is k is greater than 1 and exactly when that k is equal to 2 sorry k is equal to 4 in that case both the roots are coming and coming at the same point so that point is actually called as critical damping and critical damping is also the response there is no oscillation further you increase the gain that means you can make 4.01 you will find that uh, so these two poles came together as soon as you are making k a little greater than 4 you will find that the roots are jumping in the y direction you can check for k is equal to uh, 5 minus 2 plus minus uh, plus uh, j and another is minus 2 minus j okay so this is a very important point so from 0 to 4 uh, the damping of the system is uh, greater than 1 you can calculate every case because you can find out what is the uh, differential uh, what is the transfer function denominator uh, it is a square it is given in the previous page that is a square plus uh, 4s plus k substitute the value of k from 0 to uh, 3.99 so in that case is a denominator equation if you are substituting 3.99 that means what is omega and root under of 3.99 here this is 2 zeta omega n into s so 2 zeta into root under of 3.99 uh, is equal to 4 and you will be finding that the value of k from here oh, sorry value of zeta from here will be greater than uh, 1 okay till the k is equal to 4 as soon as k is equal to 4 you will be finding that the zeta value will become 1 k is greater than 4 then you will be finding that uh, the roots will become uh, a plus jb form that is complex roots and the damping will be falling uh, below one. So very important case. <clears throat> uh, from this case, uh, k is greater than four, you are going to find that roots will be imaginary. But even if the roots are imaginary, what is the real part of the root? Real part of the root is minus two. Real part of the root is always minus two. And the roots will keep on. So initially this was uh, my right hand side, this one, this one is zero, and this is actually minus four. You are increasing the gain, they will come closer. And at k is equal to 4, they will meet at the same point. Now, again, you are increasing uh, greater than 4, then the roots will keep on traveling upward and downward, upward and downward. And exactly, they will parallel on the same line because you are finding that roots are always real part are minus 2. So, for 5, minus 2 plus j, minus 2 minus j. For 6, minus 2 plus uh, root 2j, 6 minus 2 minus root 2j. And infinity minus 2 plus uh, root infinity j minus 2 minus infinity so how it will look like how is the locus root like uh, look like so the first root s1 it is starting from 0 coming to the left hand side and it is going up parallel to j omega axis in the left side second root it is starting from minus 4 it is coming to the uh, s is equal to minus 2 and going straight to the negative side so what is the root locus root locus is uh, starting from 0 and minus 4 both root will come here then one root will go in the positive, one root will go in the negative. And for any value of k, now I'm coming to the most important point. For any value of k, so it is important to note that the position of the closed loop poles depend on the value of k. Now the most important thing I'm telling you, you are actually predicting how the closed loop pole are going to behave depending on the open loop pole position. Just come here to check. GSHS is the open loop pole position. So what is the GSHS? S is equal to 0 and S is equal to minus 4. This is called OLTF. From OLTF, you are predicting what is going to be the position or locus of the root for CLTF. Because GSHS is given, from there we are finding 1 plus GSHS. 1 plus GSHS is actually CLTF. And equation for this, when you are solving, there is a characteristic equation. This is a characteristic equation for CLTF. And from the open loop uh, gain, that is 0 and minus 4, you are predicting actually how the CLTF poles, that is the closed loop transfer function poles, will behave with respect to increase in the gain position. So the same thing I talked previously uh, in case of stability analysis, in case of ESS, that is the steady state error analysis, that we are calculating how the closed loop system will behave from the open loop uh, pole position. So from the open loop transfer function, we are predicting how does the closed loop transfer function, closed loop poles, closed loop stability will be. So very important line, these three lines, 
it is important to note that the position of the closed loop poles so these are closed loop poles s1 s2 because we are finding it from a square plus 4s plus k which is a denominator of closed loop transfer function which is the characteristic equation for closed loop transfer function so we are finding from open loop gain gshs how the closed loop uh, poles are going to change its location with respect to the increment in the gain so it is given the most important line it is important to note that position of the closed loop poles depend on the value of k as k changes the position of the s1 and s2 changes let the difference value different value of k plot our result we vary k from 0 to infinity and plug it in the equation 7.1.1 so we are actually finding the stability of closed loop pole from the uh, open loop pole itself so this is how it will look like so s1 actually changes from the zero uh, or origin it comes here okay and this minus 4 to here so what is this point called s is equal to minus 2 they are meeting here this is actually zeta is equal to one point this point is very important most important point in root locus this is called as breakaway point bap 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 mat bolo breakaway point hi bolo so uh, where exactly uh, the, for a certain value of k so here that k value is 4 these two points are meeting okay here the zeta is equal to 1 here this is the highest gain for which we are getting a real pole usse aur thoda gain badaye if you are increasing the gain from 4 to 4.1 you will be finding that the roots are becoming imaginary so this is a very important point bap what is the significance of that first thing first significance likh ke lo first significance of breakaway point first significance is here zeta is equal to 1 system responses are non oscillatory okay but system responses are fast because k is equal to 1 and this is the highest gain at which we are going to get a non oscillatory response gain agar isse thoda bada you will be finding that poles are shifting in the imaginary direction that means minus a plus jb form mein ho jayega and as soon as it is minus a plus jb form it will be generating oscillatory waveform so breakaway point is a point where we are getting critical damping where we are getting maximum gain for non oscillatory response ye koi bhi book mein likha nahi hai this is something we understand okay. so breakaway point is a point where critical gain is there for that gain a uh, highest we are getting critical damping and this is the highest gain for which we are getting non oscillatory response is se gain thoda badao system response will become oscillatory and as the pole position is so as you are increasing the k both the poles will now go in the different direction in the uh, y axis so what is the root locus for pole 1 which was there at 0 that was the open loop pole which was at 0 uska location it will come here at minus 2 then it will go up minus 2 plus minus uh, something or uh, minus 2 plus uh, 2j minus 2 plus 5j minus 2 plus infinity j it will go so ek root ka locus hoga so if you are doing it in matlab unko kya dikhai dega ye lal mein dikhai dega so from here to breakaway point from origin to breakaway point lal line aur uske upar this will be a red line okay and this minus 4 to uh, this uh, minus 2 will be a green line and minus 2 to minus infinity will be a green line so it will look like this so this is the root locus it is coming from 0 to minus 2 minus 2 to infinity so ye wala, ye wala jo line hai, this will be a green line and there will be another line red line so it will come from minus 4 to minus 2 and this minus 4 to minus infinity so here some important observation can be made from this table so this table was there previously you can find out s1 s1 is 0 then negative 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 it is coming to minus 2 then minus 2 this was this was up to real part and then it is going towards imaginary and the minus 4 pole is minus 4 up to minus 2 that means it is shifted rightward and then from minus 2 it is going to the imaginary so as soon as it is imaginary that means oscillatory behavior we will find and oscillatory behavior means zeta is less than 1 now what are the observations from this so when k is equal to 0 s1 is equal to 0 so this is a very important part k is equal to 0 s1 is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0 s2 is equal to minus 4 which are the same as the open loop poles so these are the open loop poles same as the closed loop pole so we can ask tell me the value of gain at which open loop pole is equal to closed loop pole you have to say that sir k is equal to 0 that means if you are keeping gain is equal to 0 in that case open loop pole will be equal to closed loop pole you can find out it from here in this equation so what is the closed loop uh, denominator s into s plus 4 and what is the sorry open loop denominator i'm sorry this is open loop denominator uh, s into s plus 4 closed loop transfer function s into s plus 4 plus k so if you are putting k is equal to 0 what are the roots of this thing same as uh, open loop denominator okay so k is equal to 0 means open loop pole and closed loop pole they are in the same position 
So k is equal to zero, s one is equal to zero, s two is equal to minus four, which are same as the open loop poles. When k is equal to zero, the closed loop poles are same as the open loop poles. We have proved it. Zero k less than four. Zero k less than four means we are in the uh, this region. That means zero to four. So this region. Okay. In this case, we are finding that poles are real and distinct because this zero will keep on uh, traveling on the real axis. This minus four also will keep on traveling on the real axis. As long as the poles are traveling on the real axis, they are real. Uh, they are uh, not imaginary and they are distinct. So whenever suppose uh, the position, you can say k is equal to two. You are finding the pole is minus 0.52 and minus 3.41. In that case, what is the damping? Over damping. Okay. So what is the highest over damping? Zero and minus four will be finding highest over damping. As the k is increased, so damping is reducing. Though it is greater than one, but it is reducing. Okay. Likewise, at k is equal to four, you will be finding that damping is equal to one because at critical damping, both the poles are on the same point. I'm repeating the same thing many times because uh, you will be able to remember. Okay, so that is the same thing. When zero to four, so gain is in between zero to four, the poles are real and distinct. Distinct at k is equal to four, the k the poles are real and equal. So this is this point is called as breakaway point. So we will find what is breakaway point from the uh, equation. Significance of breakaway point. I told there are two significance. Uh, both the poles are on the same point. In this case. Uh, Uh, the zeta is equal to one. It's called a critical damping system. Step response is quite fast, and this is the highest gain for which we are getting non-oscillatory response. Again, a little bit more than that, and we will start getting oscillation in the response because in that case zeta will fall less than one. So when four to infinity, four to infinity means you are going now uh, for the higher values of uh, the gain k. Okay, so for uh, gain. Greater than four and up to infinity, the poles are complex conjugates with real part minus two. Who decides the stability of the poles? The stability of the poles are decided by the uh, negative part, negative uh, real part. If the real part are negative, in that case, the poles will be a uh, stable pole. Okay. So for k is equal to four to infinity, the poles are complex conjugates, no problem, but they are real, and real part is always minus two. That means the plot is obtained by joining all the such pole locations from k is equal to zero to k is equal to infinity. That means what is the root locus? Root locus is actually a parallel line in the left hand side at k is equal to minus two, which is parallel to j omega axis. So you are finding that for every value of k, for every value of k, we are finding that the root locus is actually the parallel to j omega axis in the minus side. That means what we are saying is the plot is obtained by joining all such pole locations for k is varied from zero to infinity. So k value uh, five here pole, k value six here pole, k value seven here, k value eight here, k value infinity. That means this will go to the infinity, but still they are in the left hand side of S plane. That is more important. What is the pole? That is not important. Whether it is in the left hand side of S plane or right hand side of S plane, that is most important. So as long as the k is in the left hand side of S plane, system is stable. So you are finding that the real part for any value of k is going to be minus two. That means for every value of k, all the roots always will be lying in the left hand side of S plane. That means for any value of k, always the root will lie on the left hand side of S plane. That means for any value of k, system is always stable. So this kind of root locus. Whichever system is generating, that system is called as absolutely stable system. What is meant by absolutely stable system? For any value of k, root locus is always lying in the left hand side of S plane. That means all the roots, even if they are changing its loci, locus, path, even if they are changing its path, but always the roots are confined in the left hand side of S plane. For three pole system, it will not happen like that. For three pole system, what you will find, I will tell you. For three pole system, this will come here. And this will come here. After that, this pole will go like this parabolically. It will go and cross into the j omega axis. So next day, it will go like this. Okay, and this below thing also will exponentially parabolically. It will go like this. Okay, so we'll be finding that for three pole system, one pole will always be going in the uh, negative direction. So three pole means three lo root locus here. Two pole. That's why there are two root locus. Okay, so two roots. So one is starting from zero, coming to minus two, and going to plus infinity. Another is minus four coming to minus two and going to minus infinity. So these are two locus because there are two poles, two closed loop poles. Okay, but for three, we'll be finding that it will come from here. It will come from here. Another root will go from 
here to the negative infinity and if you are increasing the value of k uh, this will be exponentially going upward so it will cut the j omega axis at a certain point that point is called as k marginal in below side also it will cut the j omega axis at exactly that point that point is called as k marginal so last few lines i'll read and i'll stop so this plot is obtained by joining all such point of location for k varied from 0 to infinity so for different values of k you keep on plotting what is the point so for k is equal to 5 it is here what is the root k is equal to 6 it is here k is equal to 7 it is here k is equal to 8 it is here keep on joining all these points that position of the poles for different value of k and after joining all this whatever path you are getting that is called as path of the root locus or root locus or root loci we represent the table in the form of a paragraph so previously whatever is done in this table that is actually given in the form of a paragraph this is the root locus of points which are roots the root locus was obtained by joining uh, all the points of characteristic equation roots uh, the solid line tell us how the closed loop pole move when the k is varied and uh, the conclusion is as k is increased so this line is very important you have to write at the end of the root locus as k is increased the two poles initially at s is equal to 0 and minus 4 which are actually the open loop uh, system transfer function pole so initially k is equal to 0 so initial pole position was 0 and minus 4 they move towards each other so at k is equal to 4 they collide and at k is increased beyond k is equal to 4 the split and move away the direction of the arrows is extremely important because every time you have to show what is the direction so first pole is coming from here starting from here then this arrow is towards this it is first locus initially minus four this is the second root the arrow is like this okay then this root is actually going upward and this root actually going downward and finally one line after this you can add that breakaway point is at minus two for k is equal to four and as we are finding that for any value of k the position of the roots are always confined in the left hand side of s plane that means uh, we are getting a root locus which is parallel to j omega axis and for any value of k root locus is always confined in the left hand side of s plane that means for any value of k uh, the root locus will be stable so this equation or this transfer function or this system uh, given by this open loop function k divided by s into s plus 4 or closed loop transfer function a square plus 4s plus k this system is the transfer functional characteristic equation of a absolutely stable system so this system whatever is shown here k divided by s into s plus 4 so this is a two pole system you can say so this is a two pole uh, oltf system this system is a absolute stable system because root locus uh, never leaves the left hand side of s plane and root locus is always confined in the left hand side of s plane so this is the concept of root locus i explained with respect to a uh, stable system now next day onwards so first day that's why easiest numerical we have seen this is the two root system two root for uh, open loop transfer function next day we will start with uh, open loop transfer function with three roots so maybe s into s plus two into s plus five okay and how to find the root locus for that and we will start with construction of uh, the root locus so there are 10 steps okay so if you see the first document there are 10 steps and all those 10 steps we have to carry out and here also it is given so rule 1 rule 2 rule 3 rule means actually these are steps here they have shown some rule 8 okay so 8 steps they have done uh, i generally do uh, 9 or 10 steps so one step i have uh, broken into two we will see so all this 8 step will do and you can see that uh, rauth hurwitz criterion is done in the 8th step and after that it is uh, concluded and this conclusion you have to write whether the system is stable or unstable so here also the system is stable because here also it is a two pole system we have taken likewise so we will solve some more numerical next day today this much so tomorrow we will start with so very important thing nobody misses uh, any of the lectures uh, in this week or coming week and uh, we are going to construct root locus it's a very easy thing uh, it is not at all difficult provided you understand the things the way i